like, but you can never leave. Now it's very early in the morning and I'm entertaining a guest today. Little Ace. Say hi, little Ace. Say hi. He's a good little thing. So, somebody mentioned the other day in the comments, and I read every comment that comes through. And, um, you know, so many great comments on my channel. It's really a treasure trove. And somebody mentioned the other day about uh, the song Hotel California. And, you know, its impact on, uh, you know, life on the Sunset Strip. And they said, um, you know, was, was Hotel California about the Sunset Strip? No, uh, Hotel California was not about the Sunset Strip, but certainly the Sunset Strip is an incredible and huge landmark on the California scene. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at the uh, lyrics of that and, and make some comments as far as, um, you know, what the meaning of the lyrics were and what in relation to my experiences out in California. Now, there's a line in the song uh, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. And I know, I went out there uh, with, uh, uh, there was a whole contingency of uh, guys, musicians from Virginia. There was John Billings, the bass player. There was uh, Keith Howland, another guitar player that was my roommate at another time, and also Lance Morrison, who is a bass player who has done a lot of stuff. So both, all three of those guys have uh, had long careers in the music business. Well, we headed out to California because Virginia is a state that just does not have anything going as far as music. You know, Virginia is a state that just seems to really enjoy kind of being what it is. And, you know, whereas a lot of states have, you know, uh, embraced sports teams and, you know, like Nashville, you know, when I moved to Nashville, there was no NFL team, there was no NHL team. And now there's just, you know, so much growth and so many things to do. And I've, I've said in many videos, probably too much, but Virginia just doesn't try to, Hey, let's get an NFL team or let's, let's have an area where there's a lot of live music or let's, let's do this. It's all pretty much stays stuck in the past. So you could be the greatest musician in the world. And, and in fact, um, a good friend of ours <laughs> turned out to be one of the greatest greatest bass players of all time, Victor Wooten and, and the whole Wooten brother family. We were all Virginia guys. And in Virginia, you know, it wasn't about image. It wasn't about what you look like. It was all about how you played. And so for us Virginia guys to move out West and all of a sudden, you know, well, wait a minute, this, this image thing and uh, this Sunset Strip thing and this whole deal, you know, we were, we were really always about the music. So yeah, a, a few of us had to begrudgingly grow our hair, you know, a certain way and put on a certain type of clothes. Um, you know, we, we were largely um, just, you know, Virginia guys who, you know, like to just play our, our instruments and uh, focus on that. That was really the priority. But, you know, I can say, um, I've heard Keith Howland say it, you can check out, but you can never leave. And I haven't talked to John on this subject or Lance Morrison, but I would think that they probably would agree that the California lifestyle, the California attitude, um, a, a lot of the things that are so different. Now, how are they different? You know, from my personal experience, um, you know, just, just dating, and I'm not talking about dating on the Sunset Strip and, you know, groupies and, and that kind of thing, but just, you know, finding a, you know, a, a small town girl in California or, um, you know, a valley girl or something like that, you know, the parents are going to be a lot different than parents in Virginia. 
in Virginia, um, it would never be okay for you to stay the night uh, with your girlfriend, um, you know, in, in her bed. Uh, but in California, all of a sudden it was like, oh yeah, you, you can, you can spend the night. You guys just, you keep your clothes on, you know, that kind of thing. And, and I found myself like sleeping in bed with my girlfriend, you know, at their house and they just, oh, we just want to know you guys are safe. And it was like, okay. And, and it would go even more extreme as far as the parents um, you know, giving you shot after shot of alcohol, um, you know, and then, and then even more extreme with other, uh, parents who would say, oh, we just got some, some herb, um, would you guys like some? And there was even a case where the parents, um, of a girl I was dating, they were under, going through counseling, marriage counseling, and the uh, psychologist had recommended that they take E. Now, if you don't know what E is, um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's something that's been around for a long time and it's, it's not a legal thing. And so they were told to go to this church and there was a church out in California that was providing this to, um, you know, people that were using it as a therapeutic um, way. So they would get this and say, Hey, Oh, we, we got this. Would you guys like some I'm thinking like what planet am I on? Um, it, it was far removed from the world that I grew up in and, um, you know, an incredible, uh, change, a, a different lifestyle, a different attitude. But once you've lived it out there and you've ex experienced it, um, you know, it, 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 it will change your perception of life and change your, you know, you can never really go back. And that's why it says when you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. So when you look at the lyrics to Hotel California, the second verse really, um, kind of touches upon that California thing. Now, in the first verse, he talks about, you know, kind of driving through a dark desert highway. And I, I would say everybody that moved out there from, from back east had experienced that long, long drive, that, that descent. And when you finally, finally get there. And, um, but in the second verse, you know, the, the thing about her mind is Tiffany twisted. Okay. So the glitz and glamour, um, you know, she got the Mercedes Benz. Um, you know, there is so many haves, um, out there in California, but there are even more have nots. And, um, you know, she got a lot of pretty, pretty boys. She calls friends. Um, you're going to find that you're going to, you're going to find that out in California. You know, you would, you would have meet somebody and you would think, oh, you know, but you're just the new kid in town. And the reality is, um, you know, these girls, these girls would have you as a boy toy and you would soon realize that she's got many other guys just like you and, um, you know, sort of in the stable. This, this is something, you know, for somebody that's of wealth and, uh, Tiffany twisted and has the Mercedes Benz. Well, they're going to have a lot of, lot of pretty boys that they call friends. And you might not be used to someone that's, oh, he's just a friend. But meanwhile, you're like, you're seeing them kiss. So, you know, she might have a lot of, lot of pretty boys she calls friends, but you're not going to be used to that because they may kiss. They may, they may have these warm embraces and you may feel that something is going on that you don't realize is going on and uh, how they dance in the courtyard, sweet summer sweat. Um, some dance to remember, some dance to forget. There's a lot of memories out there. 
Um, and, you know, you basically build up all these memories, but some memories you regret. And so you're dancing to forget some of the things, some of the things you've seen, some of the place, places and things that wealth uh, brings you. You dance to forget. Um, so I called up the captain. Please bring me my wine. He said, we haven't seen this. We haven't had that spirit here since 1969. Well, you could argue that Altamont um, ended the summer of love. And California, you know, went through a very uh, dark period after 1969 with the Manson murders in Altamont. And it all seemed to be coming to the end, this free love and beauty and, and, and flowers, girls with flowers in their hair and all those things that you associated with California. Um, you know, after 1969, it all seemed to, to go away and it kind of went into a, a, a dark place. And still those voices are calling from far away, wake you up in the middle of the night just to hear them say, so the very distant siren song of California is always calling you. Welcome to the Hotel California. It's such a lovely, lovely place. Uh, such a lovely face. Uh, it's, it has such a beautiful face to it. The, um, the beauty of it. Um, you know, nothing can compare to when I first moved out there and I was used to you know, Virginia and Virginia girls at the time would wear um, jeans and little preppy like penny loafer kind of like shoes and, and sweaters, you know, up to their neck and all that. And then you go out to California and you see the beauty and, and the exotic, you know, women as well. You know, was it just Susie Q from, from next door? It was beautiful, uh, Latin women and black women and, and, and blondes and brunettes and redheads and everywhere you went, there was beauty. Um, but oftentimes underneath that beauty was something, something dark and sinister. There were a lot of people suffering. So mirrors on the ceiling, pink, pink champagne on ice. Um, you know, it's not uncommon for people. Um, and I did have a girlfriend out in California that had mirrors on her ceiling. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're engaged in relations and you're looking up and you can see yourself and you can see them. And, um, it, it, it's, it does, it does kind of warp your perception. And, um, you know, it is a, an interesting view, shall we say, uh, we're all just prisoners here of our own device. Now, of all my friends that moved out there, you know, around the same time, there's only one, uh, Lance Morrison that's still out there and he's, you know, he's still, you know, engaged in the music business out there. And, uh, but most of us, you know, that I remember that I know, um, we've, we all left and, um, but, you know, despite leaving California, um, you know, we were, we, we, we checked out but in all reality, we can never leave. But the ones that stay, they're all just prisoners here of our own device, meaning we've created, you know, a device or a lifestyle that is now imprisoning us. And that is something that I strongly felt. I felt that if I had stayed out there, that, um, you know, I would have continued on a not so good trajectory and music would have gone by the wayside and I would have been a prisoner of my day gig. I would have been a prisoner of my habits. I would have been a prisoner to the bottle. I would have been a prisoner to the beautiful and smiling faces who I'm sure long into my time now would all be just a faded memory, but one that would haunt me just the same. And in the master's chamber, 
they gathered for the feast. Okay, now there's a reference here in this next part. Uh, they stab it with their steely knives. This is this is a way that the Eagles kind of got a jab in at Steely Dan. And if you didn't know that, they stab it with their steely knives. So, so the um, you know, there's a there's a line in the Steely Dan song that says, "Turn up the Eagle. The neighbors are fighting, or, or, or so the neighbors won't hear us, or something like that." So they were. They, they had shared, I think it was a management company. And so, uh, they would often, uh, you know, they would, they would in their songs kind of take a little poke at Steely Dan. Let's face it, man, as far as, uh, you know, a West Coast sound. And I know, I know the Steely Dan guys, Walter Becker and, uh, Donald Fagan were from the East Coast. They were New York guys. But when they came out to California and got those studio guys, like on the album Asia, Man, that song to me, that's that whole album feels like a drive down Pacific Coast Highway. It's just got that smooth vibe. It's just, you know, it, it's it's really incredible. And I think, you know, that 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 vibe of that record, man, it just goes perfectly. If you ever get a chance to go down the Pacific Coast Highway, um, put in Steely Dan Asia on, on the radio and cruise down there and tell me that's not like the perfect soundtrack for that. Um, last thing I remember, I was running for the door. I had to find the passage back to the place I was before. So essentially, you know, at some point you realize you have to leave. And I had gotten into a, a place in my time out there where I was like literally like seeing and, 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 and events and people that I knew on the news that were, um, you know, people were dying. Um, there were murders or homicides going on. I was seeing people spinning out of control. I was, uh, you know, seeing, uh, you know, all kinds of crazy things, which I'm going to get into on my channel. And I started to realize I need to get out of here. And I started to ask myself, if I stay here, is anything going to change? Is my life going to get better? It, am I going to get a record deal? Is anything going to happen? And when the answer to that question was, um, no, nothing is going to happen. Um, I knew it, it, my time was numbered and it was soon that I was going to be departing. But you have to find the passage back to the place you were before. There is no passage back once you've experienced the California lifestyle. Um, you know, I still have my Virginia morals and my Virginia values and my small town morals and my small time values. I understand them and I under and appreciate them now. But, um, you know, it's just a, a thing where I can't really ever go back. You know, you can't go and rock the Sunset Strip with sc screaming girls throwing themselves at you and, you know, partying and, and all this kind of stuff and then go back and be the person that you were before. Relax, said the night man. We are programmed to receive. You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. And then the guitars take you home back to California, a screaming guitar solo from Joe Walsh and Don Felder. Man, this, this, this song really kind of encapsulates and I can't help that anytime this song comes on, I know it's kind of like a stairway to heaven or one of those songs that's just overplayed and everybody's, you know, some people are sick of it. It's one of those songs I can't really, um, you know, turn off when it comes on. And it reminds me of California, even though this was recorded in the 70s and my time in LA was the, you know, mid to late 80s. It's, it reminds me so much of my time out in California. And, you know, people around you, whether it's your family or my wife or your friends that didn't live out there, they don't really get it.
until you've spent the time out there, until you've lived in California, you don't really know what it was like. And I can honestly say the 70s and the 80s and probably the 90s out there, people out that lived out there at that time, it was probably a similar experience and, um, you know, a similar experience in the 2000s. But, you know, when I went out there the last time, um, you know, it had changed so much. There didn't seem a lot of hope as far as the music business. It didn't seem like, uh, you know, the strip is, is like a museum now. It, it's like a place to go to look at the Lemmy statue and, oh, there's the whiskey and, oh, what's playing tonight? A tribute act. Um, it's, it's not like full of like young bands and, and kids handing out flyers. I would love, love it if it was back to that. If, if it was back to flyers and kids playing in bands. And even though, you know, sometimes those things can take you to a very dark place. I did feel like it was a great experience being a musician and having a place like that, that you could go. But the California lifestyle, the California attitude, whether it's the dude and hey, bro, you know, the thing about a California guy, and I've, I've told this to um, some of my friends that they you know, didn't live out there is, you know, somebody could do the most worst thing they could possibly do. And I used to joke about it, but they would, uh, hey, sorry, bro. Sorry I slept with your girlfriend and crashed your car, bro. Sorry, dude. Love you, bro. You know, it's that California goofball. You know, dude, dude, you know, and, and, and meanwhile, they just robbed you of your last dime and ate the last waffle in the freezer. You know, it, it's, it's just, you know, everyone's so, hey, bro, uh, don't get so mad, bro. You know, <laughs> and the reality is, man, you know, some of the, some of the craziest and darkest times and some of the most dastardly deeds people do out there, and they all do it with a smile on their face. So yeah, you can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave once you've lived in California and experienced that lifestyle and experienced at least the time that I was out there. You know, you can check out, but it never leaves you. It haunts you.